Primero de todo, gracias a Soma por la invitación y muy especialmente a, y principalmente a Carla Herrera Prats, a quien quiero dedicar esta, esta charla. I'm going to show uh, some, uh, um, a selection of, um, of my work that I did in the last 20 years. Um, and I wanted to start with, um, with these drawings that I've never shown. They are part of my notebook and that I made in Mexico City in 1999. And I thought it was a perfect um, occasion to just bring these out of my private uh, intimate drawer. Uh, in the late 90s, I came to Mexico City a few times. The first time, just invited by a friend, and then I was so fascinated by the city that I had to keep coming back. And I did some, you will see, there are two big series of my works that are uh, directly related and, and um, where Mexico City is, is portrayed. Um, I think one of the um, things that uh, caught my attention, first of all, was the idiosyncrasy of forms that cities have uh, all over, from their architecture to their streets to their clothing to objects. Um, and then um, how uh, domestic objects like a blender or like um, ceramic plates or a lot of the kitchen stuff comes out in the street in the public place in Mexico and not um, in other uh, countries that I had been before. These are the series that I did in 2000 and these are real uh, um, portraits of um, the Mexico uh, urban landscape. And uh, maybe you might even recognize some of these um, um, fragments of the city. A lot of them were done uh, here on uh, Avenida Revolución. One thing that caught my attention was the amount of billboards that the city displays. And when I st what I started doing was, um, I'm gonna go back um, and read. I invented the content of the billboards and I would build a sentence um, that connects all the billboards. Uh, it might take a few seconds to understand what goes on, but it could be like, seguramente mi futuro depende de los demás. Um, probably my future um, depends on others. So I started doing this dialogue with the city. Uh, fácil, soy muy fácil de convencer. I'm easy to, to convince. Um, and it was, um, yeah, this dialogue with the city all the time, but also how we so immediately have internalized the language of corporations that I was having these thoughts and I don't know anymore if they are my own thoughts or where do they belong, where do they come from. Um, this one says, uh, sois irresistibles, you are irresistible. Um, and this, like one of my interests too is this, uh, the, what is very social and out there and common, but what is also very intimate and profound and it's felt in, a, in your own private space. Uh, and I think a lot of times there is not much of a difference, um, and other times there is. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to understand that. This one says, la previsibilidad de mis movimientos, the, pre the predictiv predictivity, predictability of my movements. Um, also as if the city is like watching me, and I'm watching the city, but the city is watching me. <laughs> Uh, me reflejo en todo. Um, my reflection is everywhere. Estoy preparada. Am I ready? Pospongo mis deseos para más tarde. I postpone my desires for later. Uh, la no resistencia de mis ojos. The non-resistance of my eyes. Um, sigo la corriente. Um, I follow the flow. La seguridad de mis dudas. Um, the confidence of my doubts. Here it says, somos meras excusas. We are only uh, excuses. Tu exceso, mi lealtad. Your excess, my loyalty. Sé que a mí no me va a pasar. I know it's not going to happen to me. At the, at the end of the 90s, uh, beginning of the 2000s, I was kind of uh, feeling a lot this kind of corporate city that was taking over everywhere. 
and I was ha having these dialogues and I didn't know how to deal with those and those those were my, wor my worries and what I um, started working with. Uh, I always say that probably not, so, I don't have so much like interest, uh, but worries and that's what, why I make art. Uh, these are these individual kind of um, garbage um, paintings and they are called barricades uh, and they are like two meters high, two meters something. Um, this one says, we do things without conviction. Today, what's the revolution for? We've developed the inability to relate to things. Tourists of our own existence. Barbarians running straight ahead. Have I ever done anything useful? Is failure the beginning or is the end? This is another work that comes directly from Mexico City and um, as always, what I do uh, when I'm alone in any city, I just walk the streets. Uh, that's kind of my passion and I encounter. I, I just hope to, to have encounters with things uh, that I don't know uh, yet. And I started taking photos of the tianguis, right? The, the street markets that are this ginormous labyrinths. Uh, but instead of doing the, them from inside where um, the, the the goods are uh, for sale, I started doing them from outside and you have like this plastic tarp after plastic tarp continuous, right? Like creating these again, uh, like an, an ephemeral and very familiar um, urban architecture. I cast those, the, the, your regular kind of blue plastic tarp, I cast them again with this uh, polyurethane with a little bit of a pigment. And what I was, what I, um, was trying to um, recreate through that material was um, the, the passerby, actually this installation is called the passerby, is this idea of what we pass by every day and we don't, we, we don't pay attention to because we see it so much that we don't see it anymore. Uh, we don't spend time and dedication to these humble, poor materials. Um, and I thought that maybe uh, trans translating that into a translucent material and situation would bring some kind of, hopefully, a, like uh, some wonder and some beauty um, that if I would have used the regular material would have been lost. Um, so yeah, this is the passerby and the idea of the, how our bodies and our gaze and our um, uh, attention and maybe all these invisible things that we carry in contact with the urban landscape leave some kind of trace or, or imprint. And uh, this is one of my very recent works. It, it might sound weird, but I see these um, things on the street and in a split of a second, there's some kind of communication going on there. Um, and I take a photo uh, and then I go to the studio and print the photos of the day or of the week. Um, and then I glue them on, on my notebook and then I take notes, very quick notes. Um, um, and from these photos, um, then I, 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 I choose and I make maybe a, an installation or a sculpture. Um, but this time, a couple of years ago, I decided to, to really stay with the notebooks and understand what was happening in that very first moment. And it's all uh, completely unarticulated. There are notes that maybe the writing I never read again. Um, it's more of an impulse and a necessity to understand that object at that moment. Uh, and what came out from these works uh, was these flyers, street flyers, where I would just place the photo of that thing. Um, and then uh, the sentence that goes on this tear away tab that people would take with them is basically those notes uh, but articulated like a proper couple of sentences, like that thought. So I spent time uh, really uh, understanding what, what was happening between me and that object. Why, you know, that photo, why that interest? Um, and I've been doing these works, uh, it's like um, now it's an ongoing type of, uh, um, like an exercise and work. And I started doing them first uh, and, and hanging them on the street anonymously. Um, and, and then I've had a few shows, for example, this one in Brooklyn, 
uh, that uh, BAM was interested in the work. And then what I did is like I spent some time around that area in Brooklyn and um, take photos of what I would encounter there. Um, so I've done a few uh, specific of some areas, but I still keep doing them and when I walk um, around New York, I just hang them. We think of monuments as public objects that celebrate the past. Although they might function as reminders, the purpose of monuments is set in the future, perpetuating traditions and ensuring that values and civic obligations persist. In this sense, all monuments make believe. The challenge exists in embracing the forces of sympathetic attraction, going beyond basic need or survival strategy. A beautiful act of empathy, full-hearted reciprocity, perhaps a desperate proximity bordering on suicide. The goal of meditation is to reach clarity and emptiness. In the process, we learn that the closer we look into what we perceive as real, the less we find. Uh, with their spicy and delirious power, chilies challenge the sensitivity of the tongue and the responsibilities of the stomach, too close to, sub to substances that induce euphoric and psychotropic states, we treat them as criminals. Um, con su poder picante y delirante, los chiles desafían la sensibilidad de la lengua y las responsabilidades del estómago, demasiado cerca de las sustancias que inducen estados eufóricos y psicotrópicos, los tratamos como delincuentes. Um, this is this facade, that's kind of an empty facade um, in the desert. Windows or eyes, doors or mouths, cracks or sweat, masks or stage, coarseness or sorrow. Definitely sorrow for the defacement has taken place. The labor of the desert, background becoming background, becoming background. Ventanas o ojos, puertas o bocas, grietas o sudor, máscaras o escenario, aspereza o tristeza. Definitivamente tristeza, porque la desfiguración ya ha tenido lugar. La labor del desierto, el fondo que se convierte en fondo, que se convierte en fondo. Beauty in cities resides in the simultaneity of its realities. Historical facts intertwined with social interpretations, personal incidents get mixed up with imaginary accounts, and the political manifests as art. In that way, places become matters of layer upon layer impossible to separate. Ugliness appears when one of the fictions is isolated and imposed as a totalizing truth. La belleza en las ciudades reside en la simultaneidad de sus realidades. Los hechos históricos se entrelazan con las interpretaciones sociales, los incidentes personales se mezclan con relatos imaginarios y lo político se puede manifestar como arte. De esa manera, los lugares se convierten en capa sobre capa imposible de separar. La fealdad ocurre cuando una de las ficciones es aislada e impuesta como una verdad totalizante. One of the most archaic and powerful ideas in our Western belief system holds our personality as double. Each one of us is composed of a social fake outer layer and a more pure authentic self hidden inside. Never able to quite shake the other off, we live a split, prisoners to ourselves. This is the image or the title of the image that gives a name to this series, Invisible Forces. A limb comes up from the underbelly the way a submarine comes out of the ocean. It doesn't go unnoticed and so will carry back messages collected from the surface of the earth. Doodles, quick tags, incomprehensible names and made up symbols. Mundane phenomena capable of summoning the invisible forces that surround us. Tired of deliveries, transactions and endless comings and goings, the overworked milk crate and the sidewalk have decided to give up public operations. Instead, from now on, they will exclusively devote themselves to each other. This intimate commitment has rendered them invisible and inoperative for productive life. We see the moon only when it is illuminated. What we are really looking at is the sun. What we think we see is often not what we think we see. Mainly, what we see are sets of temporary relations in transformation, always ready to become something else.